Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to show you with a very simple tutorial how to do screen captures or screen grabs in C Sharp Visual Studio. Now, if you've never written software before, I encourage you. I've got a lot of videos on C Sharp and other programming languages in this channel. Um, I've also got for, for complete beginners, if you've never written software before, I've got a three part series in C Sharp. I encourage you to take a look at that. In this video, we're going to show you how to write this very simple application, which basically does a screen capture of whatever's on your screen and displays it in this box here, this picture box. And it also saves an image to your hard drive. And also, this application is going to not only do screen captures, but it's going to do it automatically. So you can specify how often it, you want it to capture the screen and save it to file. It defaults with 10 seconds. You can put any number in there you want and then do start, stop, and exit. So let's show you a little example of how this works. So I'm going to set this to three seconds and every three seconds it's going to do a screen capture. I start and it does one capture and I can move this and you can see it's updating. And as I move this, you can see it's giving us new images and it's capturing it. And also, it is saving them into a, a folder in the hard drive. And as it updates, it's got a new image. Now, why would you need something like this? What's the benefit of being able to do screen grabs? Well, let me give you just one example. There's many reasons why you might want to do it. A while back, I did a video on Windows 11 and talking about how Windows has been around for many decades. And unfortunately, in new versions of Windows, rather than fixing problems that have been around for decades, they add, you know, visual improvements that really don't matter. And we talked about how in Windows, there are a lot of things that have what are called progress bars associated with them. So for example, if you're going to copy something, or if you're going to download something, or if you're going to do a scan, or you're going to do a search, often Windows will give you a, some feedback on how much longer it's going to take or what percentage complete it is. And we mentioned that if you've been with Windows any amount of time, you know that most of those feedback methods are totally useless. Um, the numbers they give you are often totally unrelated to the real answer. They might say that, you know, it's going to take another hour. In fact, it only takes three more minutes and it's done. To illustrate that, what I did is I used this screen capture application and I applied it to the Windows Defender scan. And as you can see here, I'm doing a scan, a virus and threat protection scan, and you can see it's got estimated time remaining. And what I wanted to do was see how accurate this is by doing a full scan, which took about 15 hours. And I wanted to, every 15 minutes or so, grab this screen to find out what was the estimated time remaining and compare that at the end of the scan with the actual time and see how far off the estimates were. And with the help of this um, screen capture software, I set this to about 900 seconds or 15 minutes and saved the screen capture. Uh, every 15 minutes and came up ultimately was the graph like this. It shows the error every 15 minutes, how far off those estimates were from the actual time remaining. So we're going to do another video on that, but it, it was a great way to kind of automate the process to find out how bad the estimates were in this progress bar. And you can see um, it, it's been saying 14 seconds remaining for the last few minutes. So it's really basically a useless estimated time remaining. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to find out how to write this simple application in C Sharp Visual Studio. So here we are in our C Sharp Visual Studio solution. Again, if you've never done software programming, I've got a three part series for beginners on how to do this. Uh, this is a very simple application. And as you can see, you look at the um, form itself. All I've done is I have drag and dropped from the toolbox a picture box, which is this right here, this square. I've drag and dropped a label. I've got a text box up here where you enter the time step. I've got another label defining that. 
and I've got three buttons. And to get the event handler, you just double click on each of these three buttons and we'll see that in a bit. But basically very simple. Uh, only a few controls on here. And here is basically all of the code we need for this application. Now, keep in mind that this application, I'll run it, and you can see that this is going to be run by a timer, a system timer, that every, in this case, 10 seconds, it's going to capture what's on the screen and save it to a file. That's basically all this does. It's going to update the text box down here, but basically it's just going to capture the screen, put it in the text box, save it to file, and then wait for the next time step. So most of this is going to be done by the system timer. We've got a start to start the screen capture, which you see here, capturing every 10 seconds. We can stop that, which turns off the timer, and then we can exit. So pretty straightforward. So here is our main Form 1 application. Using, I've got using system, system.drawing, drawing.imaging, and windows.forms. Now, as I mentioned, we are going to save each captured image to a file. And if you look here, here's some of the captured image. And we are going to modify the name of these to show two bits of information. The first one is, what's the capture number? Like one, two, three, four, it's going to increment the capture number. And then after that, it's going to have four digits with the hours and minutes, the time in hours and minutes that the capture was made. So this one says capture 10753. So it happened at 7.53 in the morning and it was capture one. So we're going to have to do a little um, figuring out what the time is and grab the hours and minutes and add that to the name of the captured image file. And as you can see up here, the first thing we do, we have a public integer number of captures. So we can tell which is the first one, second one, and third one. Then we're going to have a public integer time step in seconds, which is basically going to come from this user entered time step. And then we're going to have screen num. Now, if you have multiple monitors, I've got three monitors, um, you want to be able to specify which monitor you want to grab from. So the first thing we do when we start up Form 1, the standard initialized component, and then we're going to default the time step text box, which is this. We're going to put a default number of 10 in there that the user can change. And then this label at the bottom, we're going to start out with that reading nothing. And that's about it. And basically, we're now going to transfer operation of this application to, of course, the Start button. So let's go to the Start button and see what happens. So the Start button, all it's going to do is it's going to set this picture box, the size mode, so that whatever image we grab, it makes sure it fits into whatever picture box we put here. All right. And to do that, I'm using a picture box one dot size mode equals picture box size mode dot stretch image. And that just makes sure that whatever image you grab, we're going to do a 1920 by 1080 screen. It's going to make sure that it stretches into that picture box. Now, if you're not familiar with picture boxes, I did another video recently on picture boxes. I encourage you to take a look at that. And then we're going to call screen capture. And there's a, that's a method that I've got right here that I'm setting up to actually do the capturing. We'll look at that. Then what we do is we're going to grab from the user what's the time step they want in seconds. And we can convert that from text to an integer 32. And then we're going to enable the timer with an interval of 1,000 times whatever this time step in seconds, because the interval is in milliseconds. And then we've started it, so we're going to say capturing screen every time step seconds to string seconds, right? So it just tells us that we're now starting to capture. And the timer is running, so of course, once the timer is running, we have to go to the timer one tick. And all that does, every time step, it calls screen capture. Very, very simple. Screen capture is right here. And it's just a basically a try and catch for an exception. So it's going to try and do the capture in this section of code. As I mentioned, we're going to have to give names to each saved image that specify the hour and minute that it was saved. 
So we're going to define hour and minute timestamp for each captured image file name. And it's going to look like 0435. So it's going to be hours with two digits and then minutes. So we have to figure out what the timestamp is, the date time now, each time we do a screen capture. So we say date time now is a date time called timestamp. And that's going to have the entire date time, which is a very complex structure. But we're just going to grab a, a portion of that, just the hours and minutes. So we're going to say time now, which is the string this is, that looks like 0435. We're going to do timestamp, which is the date time structure, dot hour. So we're grabbing the hour out of that, converting it to string with D2, which means it's two numbers. These first two numbers, in this case, 04. And we're, we're appending to that timestamp minute, which is the minutes in that timestamp, to string with another two digits. So our string time now is going to look like this with a two digits for the hour, two digits for the minute. And we can just append that to the name of the file for each captured image. So now here is where we do all the work. Um, we're going to increment the number of captures because we're going to add that to the file name. It's going to be what's the capture number and then the time. And the way we do this is first we have to define a bitmap class. And we're going to call it capture bitmap. And it is a new bitmap. And here are the parameters. We're going to say 1920 by 1080, which is the monitor size for my monitor. And we're going to do a pixel format, 32 bits per pixel alpha RGB format. So now we've defined a bitmap. And now we have to define a rectangle object which describes the entire dimensions of the specified screen. Now, all this is saying is what is the rect rectangle defining the part of the screen that we want to capture? We want to capture the entire screen, so we're going to define a rectangle called capture rectangle, and we're going to say that equals screen dot primary screen dot bounds. So primary screen we can use if we only have one monitor. So this gives us a rectangle. It gives us the dimensions of the primary screen bounds and saves that as a rectangle. Now, if you have multiple monitors, we've got another option down here. Capture rectangle equals screen dot all screens. And basically, this all screens is going to be an array of all the possible screens, the monitors you have. And you have to give it an array value to tell it which screen you want. So in my case, later on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do screen.all screens and give it, uh, specify which monitor I want to capture. But if you just got one, you can use this. So now we've got a bitmap defined. It's empty bitmap. It's blank, but we're going to fill it. And we have defined the rectangle that we're going to fill it with. And now we have to create a new graphics object called capture graphics. And it's graphics.fromImage with the capture bitmap is the image. So we're going to get a graphics object from this bitmap, this blank bitmap we created. And now we've got this capture graphics object. Now to actually do it, we have to copy the image from the screen into the bitmap called capture bitmap with dimensions defined by the rectangle, capture rectangle. So we're going to say the graphics object, gra capture graphics dot copy from screen. So we've got from the X and Y left and top coordinates. And then we have 0 comma 0 and then capture rectangle dot size. And that tells it that we will grab this from the screen. And now we have captured that image. And now all we have to do is figure out what's the file name. And we're going to call the string file name is capture. And we're going to append to that the number of captures dot to string. And we, we're incrementing the number of captures. So that's just an integer. Plus the time now, which we calculated before, this time now, 0, 4, 3, 5, or whatever. And then we're going to save that file. And we're going to say capture bitmap dot save. And we're going to specify the path plus the file name we just calculated. And we're going to save it in image format.jpg. So that's it. We have now saved the image. 
Now we can also send that bitmap to our picture box. So we'll say picturebox1.image is that capture bitmap that we've got up here. So uh, that's it. And then if we have an exception, it throws up a message box. But otherwise, we're pretty much done with getting this thing sent to the picture box and saving it to file. Now the only thing left is button stop, and I basically disable the timer and change that label text to screen capture off. And then button exit, I've just disabled the timer and then did an application exit and that's it. So that's basically all we need for this application. Very simple and um, you can modify this however you want. Now I mentioned that I use this to take screenshots every 15 minutes. That would be about 900 seconds. So you can set long time delays on this um, timer one interval um, and it works fine. So just keep that in mind. So that's about it for this one. If you like any of these videos, please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.